In this problem, we're told a 45 centimeter diameter disc rotates with a constant angular acceleration of 2.5 radians per second squared. It starts from rest at t equals zero and a line drawn from the center of the disc to a point p on the rim of the disc makes an angle of 57.3 degrees with a positive x axis at this time. At t equals 2.3 seconds, find a the angular speed of the wheel, b the linear speed and tangential acceleration of p, and c the position of p in degrees with respect to the positive x axis. So imagine this right here is our wheel. Right, and so what are we given? So that's always what you want to do first, write down the given. So we know the diameter of the wheel is 45 centimeters. We know it's going to be moving at a constant angular acceleration alpha, right, 2.5 radians per second squared. We know its initial speed, right, is going to be starting from rest. So its initial angular velocity is 0 radians per second because it starts at rest. We know its initial angle theta, or angle theta right, is 57.3 degrees. Right, it's going to be starting there. And then we also know the time interval, right, for this problem when we solve for everything, the t is going to be 2.3 seconds because that's going to be how long our interval goes for, right? So that's basically what we're given, and let's just start with a. So for a, we're trying to find the angular speed of the wheel. So solving for angular speed means we're going to be solving for omega, right? So we're trying to find omega, and the way I think we should solve it is by using rotational kinematic equations, which are just kinematic equations with rotational variables. Because notice we have alpha, we have omega zero, and we have uh, t. Right, and we can solve for omega by using uh, one of the rotational kinematic equations. So the equation I think we should use is omega, right, is equal to omega zero plus alpha times t, right? Because we have omega zero, we know what it's going to be starting at zero. We have alpha, and we know how long it's going to be going for. Meaning we can just solve for it, right? So uh, omega is going to be equal to omega zero, which is zero, plus alpha, right? So which is uh, two point five multiplied by how long it goes for, which is 2.3. So you want to do 2.5 times 2.3. And if you do that, you'll get omega is equal to 5.75. Keep in mind the units are going to be radians per second, because this is radians per second squared. And then we divide it by seconds, right? Or multiply by seconds, which cancels out one of the seconds on the bottom. So 5.75 radians per second, that's going to be the angular speed of the wheel at 2.3 seconds. So this is your answer to A. Now let's move on to B. So B is going to be the linear speed and tangential acceleration. So how do we solve for this? So let's just start with the linear speed. So there's a formula you need to know, which is velocity is equal to, right, which is the linear speed velocity is equal to r omega. So you can just take your radius and multiply it by the speed at which it's going at this time, which is 2.3 seconds, and you'll get the velocity. So the radius, uh, we know the diameter is 45 centimeters, right? So if we divide that by 2, that is going to give us the radius. So dividing it by 2, right, because this whole thing is the diameter, half of it's the radius, so divided by 2, 22.5 centimeters is the radius, but when we do this, we need it in meters. So dividing by 100, right, divide 22.5 by 100, and you'll get 0.225 meters. So now we've got the radius, so plug it in, 0.225, and then multiply by omega, which is 5.75. So plug this in, point. 225 times 5.75, you'll get 1.29375. So you can round to however you want. You can just say 1.3 if you'd like. 1.3, and then it's going to be meters per second, right? Because this is linear. So 1.3 meters per second, that's going to be the first part, the linear speed. Now let's find the tangential acceleration. So for this one, right, we're solving for alpha, or sorry, A, right? And so the acceleration is just R times alpha. So this one's just going to be the radius, right, which we solved for last time, 0.225, times the constant uh, angular acceleration, which is 2.5 radians per second, right? So you need to make sure this is in radians per second squared. This is in uh, meters. And when you do this, you're going to get it equals, so 0.225 times 2.5. You'll get 0.5625. So 0.5625. And then keep in mind what this is in. This is going to be in meters per second squared, right? That's how we measure uh, this type of acceleration. So this is going to be your answer. These are your answers to B, I guess. Now let's move on to C. So C is a little bit tricky, but just think about it. So we're trying to find the position of P in degrees with respect to the positive x axis. So what we want to do is essentially, right? So we know it's going to start here, okay? And we want to find out how long it's going to turn during this interval. And then we can find out its position, okay? So the first thing we need to do is find out how far or how many uh, revolutions or how many radians it turns in this interval. So what we want to do is basically solve for theta, right? So theta, uh, and then keep in mind the information we're given. We're given alpha, we have omega zero, and we also have, uh, right, omega final. 
because it's because we just solved for it, right? So basically the equation I think we should use is omega squared is equal to omega zero squared, right? Think about this is just like normal kinematics times delta theta. So this is just like v squared equals v sub zero squared plus two a times delta x. It's just like that, but with rotational kinematic variables. And you should be pretty good at uh, the, them by now because you've been doing problems with them. But uh, yeah, we're trying to solve for the change in theta. We have all this information, so let's just go ahead and plug it in. So uh, this is going to be uh, omega, right, is the speed at the end of the interval, which is 5.75, right, squared is equal to omega zero. It starts from rest. Zero squared is still zero. So then it's just two times alpha times delta theta. So I'm just dividing by two times alpha now so we can get delta theta. So two times alpha, which is 2.5. So go ahead and do this, 5.75 squared divided by 2 times 2.5. And when you do this, you'll get 6, or delta theta, the change in theta is 6.6125. And then this is in radians, right? So this is in radians, but we want it to be in degrees because we're going to convert. We want to find its position in degrees, right? So let's convert this into degrees, and it'll make more sense in a second. but. Converting this, we know 2 pi radians is the same as 360 degrees, right? Because if we go around the circle, it's two, 2 pi radians and then 360 degrees. So that'll cancel out the radians. And then, so basically just do 6.6125 times 360 and then divide by 2 pi. And when you go ahead and do this, you'll get 378.868. And then this is in degrees. So I'm going to round to 379 degrees, right? So we're going to rotate 379 degrees in this interval. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, so we start at 57.3, rotate uh, 378.8. Uh, so imagine we go one full full circle and then plus a little bit, right? Because one full circle is 360, and then plus like 18 or 19, sorry, plus 19. So what we want to do is add these together. So 379 plus the starting, and that's going to give us how much we turn from right here. So plus 57.3, right? So plus 57.3, if you go ahead and do that, 379 plus 57.3. And you can use the more exact value if you want. I'm just going to use a more rounded value. So I'm just going to say this is about, because this is 436.3, which is about 436. So essentially, it's going to turn 436 degrees, right? So keep that in mind. So from here, 436 degrees. So if we minus 360, right, go ahead and do that, minus 360, you're going to get 76.3. Uh, so 76.3 degrees. So it's going to be 76.3 degrees above this, right? Because 360 plus 76.3 is where it ends. So it's going to be, if this is 90, it's about 76.3. So you would say 76.3 counterclockwise, right? Because that's the direction it goes. Counterclockwise from, you could just say, uh, the positive x-axis. So yeah, so essentially, right, because the full thing it's going to rotate from here was 379 degrees. But starting from here, right, because we added it, is just 436. And then we just subtract 360 to find how far from this it is. Hopefully you understand that, but yeah. So it's going to be 76.3. You can just say 76 degrees, whatever you want to do, whatever your teacher wants you to do, though. So you could say 76 degrees or 76.3, whatever is better. Uh, but yeah, so this is going to be your answer to C. This was your answer to B. Uh, right? These are your answers to B, and this was your answer to A. But yeah, so these are your answers, and hopefully you found this useful.